So in the video you're about to watch, we're going to take that old piece of junk 1995 Goodman system. We're going to finish it off, put in a brand new Ream RP14. And there's going to be a few highlights here that I wanted to make sure you guys watch. So make sure you watch the whole video because we're going to see the new Navac 4 CFM pump hooked up to the True Blue hoses. I'm also going to be using the UEI Hub 6 to dial in the machine. And we're going to be using static pressure to check airflow. So there's going to be a lot of great things in this video. So make sure you watch it all, guys. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. If you hate it, just abstain. And please leave a comment after the video is over to let me know what you think about it. So let's get started with episode six, the first changeout, part two. This video is brought to you by EWC Controls. The new EWC app will guide you through building the perfect zone system for your customer. Make sure to download it today on Google Play or iTunes. Now I have to adapt the drain. This is the secondary going to the pan, so I need to extend this down and go to the pan. I also have the primary drain going right here, so I need to put a trap on it. I have six foot of insulation to insulate it with, so we're going to go ahead and hook those up while I'm waiting for my brother to get here with the outdoor unit. I can do some brazing and stuff if I need to, or I can insulate that duct fitting or finish the low voltage. I've tied in my drains there. There's a That's going to be shut off for a clean out. That's going to be the vent insulated over there where it turns down to the wall as required by law so I have to go downstairs and make sure we have pressure on these pipes still so I can get the fitting up this for brazing finish up the low voltage wiring and we'll be well on our way I have some of my copper tubing fit up. The liquid line's kind of janky looking. I'll straighten that out after we're done here. Once I put the insulation on this line, I can tape this to that line, including the dryer. And guys, look. I actually put the dryer up here next to the air handler. You can be proud of me. Yes. Even though now it holds this moisture. Whatever. Okay. So I'm going to go start the nitrogen. Bring the wet rag up here so I can block off here and here. It'd be like the first time I've used wet rag, really. Maybe put some on the dryer here, too. So. We'll see how it works. I used to have long hair to sing in a rock and used to stay out all night long. I used to drink myself silly, go driving for hours, but now I'm moving on. I've played a gig since summertime. It's been two years since I've tasted wine. Other than that, I'm feeling fine. Other than that, I'm feeling fine. Like something was about to get in the joint down here on the bottom side of this dryer kind of had to work with the solder and shove it out of the way so we can pressure check this part of the line set before i take all my copper stuff down that way i can insulate the line and stuff like that so i'm gonna go outside and put some pressure on it leave it for a few minutes see how it does i wired up the thermostat wires here they're all finished i haven't put any float switches in yet and i am going to put a float switch i might get one for right here too and there's this big old mass of thermostat wire right here, but I'm going to leave it and try to straighten it up with some wire ties because I love having extra thermostat wire for the future. I thought that was great that the people did it this time, although it looks like a rat's nest. I'm trying to tidy it up a little bit, but even if it doesn't look the best, I think it's great having this extra wire, so I'm not going to get rid of it. I'll try to make it so it doesn't look so god-awful, though. I still have to insulate my fitting, which was not received well on Facebook. I like it. I think it's great. Oh well. Can't please them all, guys. Can't please them all. 
So I'm going to wipe this stuff off of here and I can insulate the line as long as we're holding pressure outside. And then we're going to move on. I've got to place my TXV sensing bulb. I left a straight section of pipe right there. And as you can see, old Mickey Mouse head right there, 10 o'clock or 2 o'clock on the vapor line. And it shows another picture right down here. That's why you want to read the manual just to double check and make sure. I pretty much remembered that one, but I wanted to double check and make sure anyway, which is always a good idea. We're looking at the blower speed charts here, and I'm looking at 2417S with 13 kW heats, 2 tons, 10 bay, 1 third, 5 speed. And it has a river here at 0 0.5, 0 0.6 static is right, probably where we're going to end up. So right in this area between 0.5 and 0.7, we have our sweet spot on high speed, or 5, I guess. So we'll turn it on to 5 and make sure we're right there, making sure we're getting right around 800 CFM for our 2-ton unit. See our blue wire is our 5-speed. We're already set on 5-speed. So our green wire is our fan-only speed, and that is going to remain the same as well. Cut this off right here, fit these together after I sand this one down. Two joints there, then I can fire that liquid line right along in there. Gonna take a little bit of a splice there too, looks like. Our nitrogen has just started flowing. I have the valves packed with wet rag. I'm gonna make our braze joint here, 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 and here. And then we can pressure check and then try out that new NAVAC 4 CFM pump. So I've tied my low voltage wire and we have yellow for the contactor circuit. Red for 24 volt power. Blue is the reversing valve that energizes and heating. Purple is our, I think they call it D. It's our W signal, heat strips. And we have brown is common. Dual run capacitor, contactor, and common Y1. Down here we have our high voltage, which I've connected temporarily. The electrician's just gonna come behind me and do whatever he needs to do to make it code worthy this is just for testing purposes I have our pressure down there which it hasn't moved the whole time so we're good there have to make sure my piece of armor flex is long enough it may not be yeah it looks like it is I'd like to leave a little bit at the end to do superheat sub cooling anyway so I'm gonna get the navac pump out in a second we're gonna start pulling a vacuum see how it does and I have to insulate that fitting in the attic. Just put the oil in the 9 CFM vacuum pump. Got a couple charged up batteries here for the testing purposes. Uh, AK did tell me that these batteries had to run through a few cycles before they reached their maximum capacity and this is going to be the first cycle for this battery. So if it dies you could expect a little bit longer run time than we experience here although it may not die. We'll see. Now here's our vacuum rig. We have two true blue hoses. Look like the five foot ones I guess. AccuTools, core removers. I'm gonna put the caps back on here during the vacuum. JIC. <laughs> Field piece micron gauge, SVG3, I think, yeah. So, we're gonna turn this thing on, see how it does. Should be the ultimate vacuum setup. It revs up. There we go. So we'll see how it does with True Blue hoses, Navac vacuum pump, 4 CFM battery powered. You can see the exhaust coming out up there. And there we are. And I do believe there's a 
cord depressor in this one in case I forget, but if it doesn't show up here in a minute, I'll check it. Oh, there it goes. Uh, we're rocking and rolling. True Blue's rocking and rolling, guys. Look at that. Alright, I'm going to put some stuff away in the car and we'll see how well we do, but that is... That's pretty good. This is an old line set and a new coil. So we're down below a thousand microns already. Let's let it rock and roll. We've already been on for about a minute. It's kicking ass, basically. So, let's see how it does. I was about to walk away, but I mean, it's been just another 30 seconds and we're already below 300 microns, so... This thing is... like a beast. Look at this thing. Navac and True Blue. Man. Alright, see it's slowing down now. I'm gonna go get some of my stuff, insulate that stuff up in the attic, and I'll come back and see if we're on negative microns. We're creating a space vacuum of which there's no escape. We have 113, so we're going to shut off the vacuum, shut off the pump, see how it holds vacuum. See how it works. I hate all that stuff comes out of those ball valves right there. In fact, I'm tempted just to run it again. But we'll see it's still dropping right now. I'll give it a few minutes. See how she does. Give the pump a rest. We'll uh, give it like five minutes and see if we're up to near 500. If we're not, we're good to go. Looks like we're going to be pretty good. Our timer's up. We're at 180 microns, so we are good to go, bro. We can go ahead and let the refrigerant into the system. Do a little test run, see how much refrigerant we have to add, if any. I'd opened up each one of these valves, guys. Put the caps back on. I had the Hub 6. Hooked up here, temperature probes for the pipes, pressure probes here. I have to go put the other probes up in the attic. Little tech tip, guys. I use this to open the suction side valve because a typical service tool bit like this will bottom out on the ream and this large part won't catch. So you need to use something. I have this piece right here, a little cobalt set that I use. Works really well. So just a little tip right there while I go Turn this thing on for the first time, so let's check that out, and then I'll head up into the attic and we'll do some testing. All right, here we go. First unit I've started up in quite a while. Let me get on to the testing phase, and she's probably a little low in refrigerant. We'll check that out too. Guys, don't forget when you are starting a system up, go ahead and prime that drain so you don't have any issues draining throughout the cooling season. And so you can check and make sure everything's draining properly. We got 116 on suction, 245 on liquid, not too bad. 9 degrees of subcooling, 11 degrees of superheat. Charge doesn't look too far off to begin with here. Pretty good. So I'm going to get a delta T and static pressure. And we will go from there and hopefully those will turn out good. We'll see what that static is. I'm kind of curious because we have an existing duct system. See if it's a little high or not. I have the... Hub 6 plugged in right there for supply temperature, getting static pressure with my none too long cords. Return side, then there's a hub on the return side. I didn't put it up into the flex, which I might need to because it's right there at the coil. So it might appear a little bit colder. If you guys look down here, we got anywhere from 0.62 to 0.66 for static pressure. So it's a little bit higher than you'd like it, but not too awful bad. Thought it might be a little bit higher than normal because we have this existing duct system. So, we have a 19 degree delta T, which is a little bit higher than our target delta T, which will go along with a CFM that is maybe a little bit less than 400 CFM per ton, which we're going to check in just a second. But still, in range where I always went by the I-manifold stuff, where it says 3 degrees beyond the target delta T is trouble. So we're not anywhere near 3 degrees, we're about a degree and a half off, so not too bad, and we're getting a little bit closer there. So we have 114 because it's really cool in the house. And we have 244, 10 degrees of subcooling, 12 degrees of superheat. We're looking pretty good right now. I'll probably just do a recheck in the spring just to double check. As you can see, the return dry bulb is cold. So we're almost into the area where we can't actually do this accurately because it's too cold in the house as far as the refrigerant side. But to me, it looks pretty good. Our static pressure keeps bouncing there around 6'1", 6'3", anywhere in that range. So let's go ahead and look up what our CFM will be. We'll sort of take what's on the table and kind of figure what we would be at. 
So looking at my chart here, 2417S with 13KW heater. Come over here, and we're going to be between 791 and 746. So if we're 6 0.62, we're going to be a little bit closer to 791. That's about 50 apart, so somewhere in the 760 range, 760 to 770 CFM. So not too bad. We're talking about dividing that in half to get per ton, and we'll end up getting something like... Let's see, 760 divided by 2, 380. So 380 per ton is not too bad at all. So call this a win. One suggestion I could make in the future, they're going to see how it performs with their little outlying room, which has had issues in the past, and I told them that it wouldn't be too bad to add a supply out there, maybe a supply and return, and that would definitely bring us down within the range of 0.5. But we'll see. It's functioning right now. We got good CFM. We got good temperature split and kind of too cool outside to check it, but looking good. The system is now in heat mode. Let's see if we can see this. 330 over 130. 36 degree delta T because we have our heat strips running too probably. Supply air dry bulb 109.5. So nice and toasty coming out. Put out a lot of heat. Still got to get my insulation there. I need some black tape, man. I need some black tape. That'll, that'll make the world right right there. But just wrapping up testing right here. I'm going to take some amperage readings, some voltage readings, just to round everything out and make everything dot the T's and cross your eyes. All that stuff. <laughs> That's backward. All right, guys. Well, this is the beast up and running. Still got to find a thermostat for the homeowner using the old stat right now. So, job's not quite done, but 99% there. Guys, you can see we have a 392 PSI head pressure. Getting really hot inside. 77 degrees on the return air dry bulb. It's pretty hot. The Delta T's dropped down because the heat strips have dropped out. So we should be shutting off here in a second. Really, really hot. But remember, this is 410A. So, this is something like having a upper 200s R22 pressure mid upper 200s I would say. We have 8.51 amps on the compressor. Be interesting to see what it pulls. We have 10 amps on the compressor total. So getting close to that because we're getting high, high, high pressure because it's getting so hot inside. I'm gonna go shut it off so it doesn't run up too high. Just double checking voltage out here. We have 248. So pretty high on the scale of volts overall, but within the operating range. Went ahead and shut down the heat because it was getting so hot inside. The thermostat's reading like 70 degrees, and the return air temperature going back to the unit's almost 80. So I think the thermostat's pretty much ready to go bye-bye. It's an old thermostat. The buttons stick. It's one of those simple comfort ones. So going ahead and getting a new Wi-Fi stat. We just hadn't picked out which one he wants just yet, but we're going to work on that today, I think. All right, guys, I'm heading home from the job here. Just left. Very satisfied coming back, being able to do a change out pretty much on my own. My brother did help me with lifting the equipment up and getting the condenser set in place. But it was really fun getting back after it and using all these cool tools that things like the podcast has given me access to that I might not have had access before. So it's pretty cool. So along the way, we'll be able to test some stuff and let you guys know whether or not it's worth buying or not, which is pretty exciting. Today, we had the True Blue hoses and the Navac 4CFM pump. It was awesome. That were great. So I fully endorsed that. We're going to try it some more, but that was awesome. I had not seen a vacuum like that in a long time, especially on an existing line set. So that was pretty awesome. The ream started up just fine, went through all the motions. The homeowner is actually ordering a thermostat for the system that he wants. I went to a couple supply houses. They didn't really have anything that really liked a whole lot now he found something online that he liked and I say more power to you pal so he went ahead and ordered that something that you guys didn't see me do there at the end of the job is I added I don't know if it's an SS1 or SS2 it's a little elbow float switch it's not the one that's in line but I put one of those in the secondary hole on the drain pan for the coil and I also added an outdoor thermostat required by local regulation to control when the heat strips can come on 
So I added both of those, started the system back up and test ran it. You guys saw how it ran before. So real satisfied, pretty happy with that. I also advised a homeowner that a little bit of improvement to the system could be adding either a return in his back room or an extra supply if he needs it. That'll lower that static pressure a little bit and bring us a little bit closer into the 800 range and allow that blower to work a little bit more efficiently. So that's where we're at guys. The job is done. I'm going to pick up the check tomorrow after I do the warranty tonight and drop it back off to them. I always give them a night to go ahead and use a new system. I get the warranty stuff ready and then he can have a 10 year parts warranty and I offer one year labor warranty on all my stuff. I used to offer a little bit longer warranty, but I don't now. I just like to keep it simple. One year, good to go. I can understand two years, but beyond that point, I don't think I'd do any more than that unless they wanted to pay for uh, a labor warranty from the manufacturer. So that's where we're at guys. I'm gonna pick me up a Coke Zero, head home, and I will see you guys on the next one.